What is going on? We made it to another Sunday. You know what that means. Time to work on this beast. Uh, made a video a little while back about common problems and uh, kind of touched on bad batteries. Well, guess what? Now that I got them all nice and painted to match the car, I had a bad battery, which was a bummer, but uh, it got even worse. I got three bad batteries, so I'm just going to swap them all out. I'm not going to paint them again. Uh, I like to. They do have a warranty, so I'm going to kind of leave them as they are for a little bit. I don't know. Going to end up changing the trunk up anyway, so I don't really want to put a whole bunch of time in it. You know, kind of wanted to do it before just because I didn't really have time to mess with it. Not like I do right now. Basically, I'm just trying to get it right and drive it. Uh, I'm ready to start driving this thing. So, with that being said, we got a little bit of work to do. i uh, got some other stuff I'm going to work on. kind of explain that as we get into it. So, before we do that, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. Let's get to work because it's getting hot. I guess I'll fire it up a little bit and get some oil circulating first. So, as you can see, I'm getting water in my trunk somehow. Probably from the hack job they did on the roof. But as you can see, I got the batteries all nice and painted. Uh, the battery tie down was already painted, kind of just left that. I like the color. Uh, could be done better, but like I said, I'm trying to get this on the road. I'm not really trying to sink a whole bunch of time into it because I don't really have a lot of time. But I'm going to show you guys what is going on, kind of a scenario, what you can look for if you got bad batteries. We'll see if we can't just walk up a solenoid. How about that? Last time I messed with it, it just, it really acted like it had dead batteries. And I just charged them. So as luck would have it, it wouldn't be as dramatic as it was the other day. And it's probably a little bit warmer today. Before I was having problems out of the rear batteries, uh, well, let me back up. First, I was having problems out of my front pump. Uh, my rear pumps were acting just fine. I go hit my front pump, you hear the clicking sound that you heard. Then I started having problems on my back pumps. Uh, one would lift up, the other one kind of wouldn't. You might have already seen that. Uh, they wouldn't lift up evenly. And then it just started getting to where it was clicking as I was trying to lift up the rear. So I did a load test on it and kind of show you what I found. So that right there is a load tester. Uh, it's different than a voltmeter. Yes, it's kind of a voltmeter. You can check voltage on that. But really, it puts the battery under a load, which a voltmeter cannot do. Now, previously, I knew this battery was bad. Like I said, I was having problems out of my front pump. I narrowed it down to this one being bad. As you can see, I basically took it out of the equation. Let me backtrack on that. This battery was bad. I took it out of the equation. You can see this, uh, this wire right here goes to my pump, but that's going off the negative side. So it's literally all this post is acting like is just the uh, distribution block. So I got this coming over here, which is the negative on this battery. This is just like a distribution block. It's more or less like as if I took a wire and put it from here to here. Think of it that way. So I took that out of the equation because I knew that was bad. But unfortunately, once I started testing down the line, I found more bad ones. So we're going to go ahead and test the batteries right now. I do believe I have one, you know, at least good battery. Hopefully the other two will show up that they're bad. Uh, so we can change them out. You know, I'm going to change them all regardless. But I kind of like to show you guys what to look for. Because I already know. All right, first we're going to disconnect our ground. Definitely don't need that hooked up. <clears throat> When hooking up a load tester, put it on the right polarity. As you can see, I got my batteries flip-flopped as I go down, so I have to flip-flop my connections as well. Got positive on positive, negative on negative. Try not to touch pump with the other lead. And it's showing 12 volts, showing good. Hold it for a few seconds. And it is holding the load. Now we'll move down the line. This is probably where these will all show good. But as much of a pain as it is to put these in the car, I'm not going to mess around with it anymore. All right, that one's showing right at 12. The other one was probably 13, really. So we'll put it under a load. Ooh, that one is bad. Hopefully you guys can see that. 
All right, I'm gonna take that off. How about that? There we go. Took the protective layering off, and that way you guys can see a little bit better. As you can see, shows 12 volts. You hit under load, boom, it's bad. So that is the difference between a good battery and a bad battery. So that battery right there is in fact bad. Bummer. Check it again. That's showing good. It dropped a pretty good bit, but it could still be good. There, there, showing good. Boom, that one's super bad. <laughs> Didn't mean to make a reference there. I already know that one's bad, so we're chucking them. They're all getting thrown out. All right, here's take number three. Try and get this in the shot. In between dogs, roosters, and cars, and glare. You might not be able to see that little needle, but there it is. It's on 12. When we put it under a load. So here we go, take number four. Maybe somebody won't yell in the background. Showing 12 volts. Looks like it's kind of charged. Put it under a load. Boom. It goes all the way down. So that's definitely a bad battery. Well, got a flat tire in the lock. I kind of knew that already. I was hoping it'd hold air. I knew it had a bubble on the back of it, but it finally gave way. So that sucks. Because I was going to start it up and move it in the shade. So I guess I'm going to just start pulling batteries. The bad thing about this battery rack, it looks cool and all, but it is a pain to change batteries. And it was kind of my own doing. See, when I built the battery rack in Tony's Lincoln, well, the Lincoln now, it's not Tony's anymore. Uh, did a little tribal design and made it to where you couldn't see any tie down mounts, just like this. Except I put his mounts right there. And that was the first thing everybody said when they seen it. Oh, it's tied down there. I was like, that's kind of a bummer. It kind of ruins the whole effect of it. So this one, I don't want to say, oh, it's tied down there. So I put the tie down bolts under the rack. And there's not a whole lot of room to get your hands down there. So that really sucks. And I got a spider right there. So I'm going to have to kill him first. All right. Oh, there's another spider. Almost didn't kill the first one. He almost got away and was just angered. Got our ground disconnected. Now that we're good and safe. Probably start there taking that wire off. Check out the super green grass. Man, looks even better on camera. You can also see a little bit of dewy, which reminds me, wrong kid died. That sure didn't take any time at all. That's the cool thing about time lapse. Wish it had happened in real life, it wouldn't be so hot right now. Like a glove. I think it is a real nightmare to put in. That's why you see the back and plate scratched up. When I put it back in, I totally forgot there was such a low clearance, and I shoved it in there and BAM! Nailed the back of plate, so that was kind of a bummer. But it is what it is. Ain't really worried about it. Gonna start pulling these things out. Probably should have marked which one's the bad one. Suppose I'll do that right now while I'm thinking about it. Now the fun part. Now my back's starting to hurt. This ought to go great. In case you didn't already know, put your inline fuse on your switch wire. It could definitely save your day. And for those that are curious to see how the rack was actually held down, that's how it is. All thread goes through there. You gotta stick your fingers under there, thread it up. I'm lazy, I didn't put a nut on those two. As uh, Puddin's Fab Shop says, if two didn't hold it, four never would. Well, there we have it, we have the batteries in, I completely destroyed my back, so we'll see you on the next one. Nah, I'm just kidding. Eh, I still got more work to do, I only got one day to work on this, so I'm trying as much done as I can. It's freaking hot. So I'll bring you guys back when I get the tie down in. 
feel I made it look pretty smooth pulling it out and it's not gonna go that good going back in so I'll spare you guys well we got everything put back in there uh, the tie down went a little bit better than I figured it would got all of our cables on FYI uh, if you didn't already know if you're super sweaty like I am and you're touching batteries and you're touching the car it will shock you uh, it didn't this go around because it kind of already knew it would but uh yeah keep that in mind you know if it's raining and you're working on hydraulics ask me how i know but if you're sweaty and working on hydraulics you can't get shocked it ain't gonna like kill you or nothing like that but it will definitely tingle and before you put in the comments yes i know those batteries are ugly they really are i was gonna peel the label they got a one-year warranty <laughs> fun fact these all have a warranty i forgot i didn't peel the label off of them so i might just swap those out so now we got everything wired up obviously we should test it you know me by now, you know I've already tested and it already works. Uh, I try not to look like a goof on YouTube. I save that for the professionals. Uh, fun video. Check out Backyard Boogie. I think he has it up on YouTube. If not, uh, I know he had it on his Facebook page, but I'll tell him to put it up on YouTube because it's pretty funny. It is going to hook his ground up. Had a problem. It was a little intense. Definitely not scripted and you can tell. But here we go. We're good there. Sounds like the front pump might be low on oil though. If you watch me unwire everything, you might be wondering what that was. That goes to the street charger. And if you want to jump on the bandwagon of, oh, the street charger killed all your batteries, well, there's no fuse in that street charger. Not to mention, the power wasn't hooked up to that street charger. Fun fact, I was trying to get my amp to work, and the amp and that both run to the front battery, and I had neither one of them hooked up. So, yeah, definitely didn't do anything to the batteries. And if you've seen my videos before where I basically go down the lineup of cars that I have and say, that one's getting a street charger, that one's getting a street charger, that one's getting a street charger, well, new lineup. That one's getting a street charger, that one's getting a street charger, that one's getting a street charger. And with all that being said, it's too hot out here to be talking about how much I like street chargers. Plus, I have a whole video for that. I'll put it up above. But since we're on the subject of liking things, go ahead and like the video. Subscribe if you haven't already. Hopefully this video helped you out. Hopefully you'll learn something. Uh, maybe help you check the battery, save you a little bit of a headache. But I'm going to leave it here. I appreciate you guys watching. And remember, you, know, you won't know what you can do until you do it. So get out there and do it. I'm going to go do something else because it's hot. See you. Good shot. Got away free. It lives to die another day.